What is up, fight fans? Welcome back to another episode of the MMA Anomaly podcast. I'm your host, Olin Stewart, aka MMA Anomaly. And in this episode, we'll be going over my predictions for UFC London 2, I guess we're calling it. Um, this is the upcoming UFC London card starring Tom Aspinall again and Patty the Batty Pimblet and Molly the Meatball McCann. So let's jump right into it. So in this card, I'll basically be going over the entire main card as well as two hand-selected fights of my choosing from the preliminaries and my picks for these fights. So we'll go ahead and start at the bottom of the card, starting with Mohamed Mikhaev going up against Charles Johnson. Now Mikhaev comes in at a, a minus 460 point favorite going in against a plus 440 Charles Johnson underdog. I'm going with the favorite in this one. I do think Mohamed Mikhaev gets it done. I think he is an absolute animal in there. And I, I just, I'm a true believer. I'm on that hype train 110%. And I think that he's better than Charles Johnson everywhere the fight can possibly go. Uh, I know that he's only 7-0 going in against an 11-2 veteran, a title holder from another organization. However, that being said, if you look at the amateur battles that Mohamed Mikhaev has had, he has had a ton of experience, which most people don't get in their amateur career. And I think he's going to bring that in and show that. And I think Muhammad is somebody to watch in this weight class and that he will potentially end up being not only a world-class fighter in the UFC, but realistically, I see him being the flyweight title holder in the future. Now, in this next fight, I'm taking the underdog, Maquan, Mr. Finland Americani, at plus 160 as an underdog. I'm always a fan of this guy, win, lose, or draw. I think he's a very exciting fighter. I think he's always fun to watch. And I don't think this time is going to be any different going in against Jonathan Pierce. Jonathan Pierce is at a minus 190 favorite. I do think he brings a lot of skills to this fight. However, I think McQuan ends up getting it done via first round submission. He'll probably throw a couple of random flying knees in there. Maybe one out of three will connect. Maybe that puts the guy away. Probably not. It'll more realistically end up being a first round submission after he ends up either shooting it on a nice takedown entry or rocking his opponent and then going for the submission once his opponent is either wobbled and or gassed due to being hurt. Jumping into the main card, we've got Paul Craig. Paul Craig going up against Vulcan Ozdemir. I've got to go with Paul Craig going out there and winning by doing Paul Craig things. I think he'll probably go out there, make everybody who bet on him sweat bullets and possibly have a heart attack and or a stroke whenever he gets rocked and wobbled and knocked out on his feet like 10 times before getting a submission win in the first round or second round after, again, taking tons and tons of abuse unnecessarily and still somehow end, ending up getting off the uh, submission win because that's what Paul Craig does in there. In the next fight, we've got Molly the Meatball McCann going up against Hannah Goldie. Hannah Goldie at a plus 330 point underdog compared to the minus 410 favorite in the Meatball. I think the Meatball loses this one. She had a stellar knockout in her last outing, had the spinning back elbow hurt around the world. I do think that that knockout has gone to her head as well as her friendship with Patty Pemblett. I think that she's coming into this possibly way overconfident. And Hannah Goldie is a very well-rounded mixed martial artist, whereas Molly McCann is a pretty decent striker. I think Hannah Goldie will be able to take her down, negate a lot of the early striking threat, gas her out, and then grind to a uh, pretty dominant decision win. Now, this next fight is pretty interesting because, I mean, it's interesting in the fact that it's very hard for me to make a decision on who I think is going to win either which way. We have Nikita Krylov going in against Alexander Gustafsson. Now, Alexander Gustafsson has had more losses as of recently and less wins. However, if you compare the, the people that he's gone against and kind of the poor judgment that he's made as far as who he's chosen to go against and what he's chosen to do, example, going up to heavyweight and facing Fabricio Werdum, probably not a great move. And then we have Nikita Krylov, who lost to Paul Craig, as well as losing to Magomed Ankalaev. And his most recent win came over Johnny Walker, who has, let's be honest here, had kind of a fallen from grace. So Nikita Krylov's last win really isn't that stellar when we compare that to the last win of Alexander Gustafsson being over the former champion, Glover Teixeira. I am leaning more towards Alexander Gustafsson in this one. However, I will say the fact that he's had about a two year layoff since his last fight is pretty worrisome for me. Now in the Coco main event, AKA the people's main event, we got Patty the Batty Pimblet going up against Jordan the Monkey King Levitt. I think Jordan Levitt completely derails the hype train. I know you've heard me say it again. Um, I'm kind of like GC in this manner. When I bet against someone and they prove me wrong, I'm going to bet against them until the end of time. Um, I'm betting against Patty Pemblet, even though he is a minus 255 favorite. 
I'm going for the plus 215 dog in this one. I think he wins not only dominantly, but I think he wins by submission in the very first round. I did go back and watch some tape on both of these guys. Jordan Levitt is a pretty sloppy striker, but a great grappler. And then on the other side, you have a decent grappler with decent striking and Patty Pemblet. Uh, when it comes to his striking, he constantly leaves his head on the center line. He's very, very hittable. And when he does take his head off the center line, instead of moving it side to side, what he does is put it back or extend his chin straight up. And now what that does, if you've ever sparred or trained, is it leaves your chin very, very open to receive damage. And it makes you very susceptible to being knocked out, which is why we've seen him be rocked in most of his fights that he allows himself to get in the pocket and get into exchanges with the opponents. That being said, I think Jordan Levitt gets it done and makes it look pretty darn easy. Now, in the actual co-main event, we have Chris the Action Man Curtis going in on short notice against Jack the Joker Hermanson. Um, I mean, these nicknames are both great, right? We got the Joker, we got the Action Man, the superhero versus the supervillain. I think the action man gets it done, right? The hero always wins. You got to go for the hero. He's also jumping in on short notice. Jack Hermanson was preparing for Darren Till. Chris Curtis is nothing like Darren Till. He's a relentless pressure fighter. We've seen him have a stellar and strong showing so far since joining the UFC again. And honestly, I think that this is going to be no different on his rise to the top. Minus 115 for Chris Curtis. We have a minus 105 for Jack the Joker Hermanson. So this is literally a pick em if I've ever seen one. And if I had to pick, I'd probably pick Chris the Action Man Curtis. I actually think that this goes the distance. I think he ends up getting it done uh, via unanimous decision. Now, in the main event, we have Tom Aspinall going up against Curtis Razor Blades. Curtis Blades is the plus 115 underdog in this one. I am going with the minus 135 favorite here in Tom Aspinall. I've been a true believer of his. He trains with middleweights. He has the speed of a middleweight. He moves like a middleweight. And he has just an incredible fight IQ, especially for how young he is in his mixed martial arts career and just combat career in general. I think, I mean, he's 12 and two going in against somebody that's 16 and three. There's definitely a little bit of a experience discrepancy there, but not a ton. And if you look at who Tom Aspinall has gone against in his career thus far since joining the UFC, he's really had a fast track to the top. And I think this will be his toughest test yet, but I do think we'll see him rise. I see it happening in the second round, probably via knockout or submission. As always, like, comment, subscribe, smash that bell for notifications, and please let me know in the comments below how your opinions differ, who you think is actually going to take home the wins in these fights, and uh, how you see them playing out. Also, how about those announcements for Abu Dhabi October 22nd? Who's going to Abu Dhabi with me, guys? Let's go.